Hey everybody. Welcome to Fab Fit Friday Pattern Hack Attack Day. I'm really excited because the more I'm thinking about this project, the more I'm thinking it's going to be really good for my wardrobe because it'll open up new styles for me. And I will explain that in a minute. Hi Diane, welcome. I think it's just you and me right now. Um, it's a very, very warm in my studio, so um, I have my fan going. I hope it's not, I hope the audio is okay. Hi, Netwear. Welcome. All right, so I did a little poll to give people choices for what version of a new neckline they want to work on for this pattern hack. So I'm going to be revealing the winner of that, and I'm going to show you how to hack the neckline. Um, and I just want to talk a little bit about the project. Now, I did, I posted this picture in my, our Facebook group right here. And you can see it's a picture of a model wearing a long sleeve tee over a sort of a spaghetti strap dress. Okay, this is in vogue this month. Okay, and I will tell you, not in love with the way any of this looks. It's very busy for me. Um, but it intrigues me because making a layering top to wear underneath something might allow me to, um, you know, wear something with a very thin strap over it. So I'm kind of excited because I really like that strappy look, the little... Um, dresses and spaghetti straps and or even just narrower straps like a jumper or something I don't know but if you have on a base layer it hides your bra so you don't have to worry about the strap showing so that's kind of why I'm excited about this layering tee that we're going to be working on now if any of you do not want to make the cropped version of it that is completely fine I'm not going to be offended um, but I like the idea of doing a cropped version because if you're hot like me, having less fabric under you, underneath your whatever you're wearing over it would be, I think, cooler. So when I design mine, I'm going to have it stop like at my Empire waist or just around my midriff somewhere so I can, um, you know, have a layer that's not super hot to wear underneath something else. Let me just stop and say hello to everyone. Hi, Susie. Hi, lots of yarn. Oh, Margaret. Hi, Margaret. <laughs> Mary, how are you? Hi, Diane. Um, I just want to say, I can, I can tell everybody Diane, right? The two Dianes who are joining us today actually live close to each other, and they actually met up for lunch or coffee or whatever it was at you know, where they met and they sent me the picture of the two of them and I just want to say it warms the cockles of my heart that um, you guys got together and I, I love that that made my day that day so I'm so happy I'm so happy you guys live close enough together that you could like connect um, all right let me go over to my other view here and I'm just gonna make it a little bigger Okay, so I've prepped my pattern, and actually this first sample I'm going to be making is not going to be for me. Um, I have a very talented social media manager. Her name is Brittany. She's amazing. Um, she kind of keeps me on track in terms of planning things and getting my posts done and so on and so forth. But she was actually the one who asked me about this months ago, and I actually sent her the pattern and then it occurred to me I never did anything or did a tutorial to show her how to make one of these. So Brittany's really my original inspiration for this project. Um, so I just want to show you here, if you want to be prepped for next week, you're going to need two copies of your sleeve pattern. And I'm going to show you how to hack it into something that requires two copies. And that's all I'm going to say for now because I don't want to ruin the surprise of the sleeve. And I'm really hoping that if it cools down, I'll be motivated to actually make one up ahead of time so you can see how it looks. 
before you go through the bother, bother of making all these adjustments. But I just wanted to point out, you're going to need two copies of your sleeve um, for the pack. And if I didn't say, I think I said it, this is the T, the T from the T twin set. Hi, Roslyn. Welcome. Hi, Della. Andrea. Hi, Andrea. Andrea, I emailed you about your sleeve. Did you get my response? If not, please look and, um, you know, we can get together on that while I have you in front of me. Um, all right. So, T twin set. And you can see this version of the pattern. I actually picked out the smallest size and I printed it out and taped it together. So sometimes I do deal with my own PDFs, even though I'm not a super PDF fan. But you'll notice that I only tape together this much of the pattern because we're, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to shorten it and make it cropped. Okay, so this is the pattern I'm going to be working with. Um, and now I just want to tell everybody I did a poll if anyone noticed oh, okay oh good Andrea all right I just wanted you to know that I love you and I wasn't ignoring you if um, you hadn't gotten a response for me um, all right so we had a poll and I put the poll on my YouTube I put it on my Instagram and I put it in our J. Stern Designs Fit Sew Embroider group, and the choices to hack the original T neckline were a, a mock turtleneck, a cowl neck, or a crew neck or very high V neckline. And actually, what, what happened with the raglan sleeve and the T kind of happened with two of the necklines. The the cowl neck and the um, the mock turtleneck are, are like <laughs> neck and neck. <laughs> you see I made a little funny there? So they were so close, I figured I'm just going to show you how to do both of them. Okay, so I'm actually going to prep my pattern for the mock turtleneck. And then I have some minis. I'll show you how to make the, um, I'll show you how to make the cowl neck if you'd rather make the cowl neck. So... I want everyone to be happy, snappy. And then in the process of making the close crew neck, that's actually the first step to making the mock turtleneck. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to make a mock turtleneck. And then um, and I'll sprinkle in some comments about how to make a high crew neck. And, you know, just quickly, you can just very easily make that then also into a high um, V-neck. Um, so we'll do the... the mock turtleneck and then I will show you how to do a cowl neckline so you'll have a soft drapey front without adding ease to the rest of the garment because remember we want this to be fitted because it's going to be fitting underneath something okay so let me switch back now that I have um, revealed oh good Andrea is happy she wants both necklines I hope everybody's happy snappy here um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my pattern in half. Okay, so this I've got a back and a front. Let's start with the front. Okay, so here's my front. Um, my front from the T twin set. The first thing I'm going to do here is I am going. I am going to start by. Continuing my center front line up like this. Okay, so you can see I've made my center front up higher than my shoulder. Okay, this is kind of a guideline that we're going to be using. Um, and what I want to do here is I want to do a horizontal from the tip of the shoulder going across like this. All right, so the reason why I did these guidelines is because the first step in making a mock turtleneck is to close up the neckline so it sits at the base of your neck. And we're going to use three inches as a guide because if you 
chopped your head off. <laughs> I know that's gruesome to even say, but if you did, and if you looked at your neck, it's approximately, you know, a six inch circle. Okay, so that's basically your top down look of your neck. Um, so we're gonna cut that into quadrants. So my total of six inches, I've got three inches here, three inches here. Um, you know, there's three inches here and there's three inches over here. And the front and back um, don't really translate um, as much in a knit garment because obviously you need more in the front than in the back. But we are going to pay attention to that three inch number um, to adjust the front neckline. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'll use a different color. I bought new markers so I have every color in the rainbow. I was super excited. Let's use green. I am going to measure, um, if I measure my three inches here, it, it's sort of, that's really where it is. As a matter of fact, it's not even quite three inches across on this smaller size. So I'm going to actually shorten it to two and a half inches because there's going to be a seam in there. Okay, so I'm going to, oops, I'm going to measure this way actually from my center front I'm going to measure out two and a half inches and I'm going to make a, a line like this um, and then I'm going to measure down three inches actually maybe two and three quarters I'm going to go two and three quarters all right so that's going to be the new shape of our um, our neckline in the front and the reason why you want it so close is because the mock turtleneck we're going to create a band it's going to be a mock turtleneck that's a separate piece you need that band to sit at the base of your neck because if it's out farther away from your neck it's going to pull up funny and it's going to pull at the body of your shirt so it's better to guess um, a little bit narrower because you can always scoop it out if you need to Basically, I'm just going to use my ruler to create this shape here. Okay, so that's going to be my front neckline. And you can see what I've done here is I've added a little bit of length to my shoulder seam. So I'm just going to bring my back right in here. And I'm going to bring my back up. Let's do the same thing in the back. Let me get my pink back over here. I'm going to continue my center back line straight up and then I'm going to also make a parallel or a perpendicular line from the tip of the shoulder. So what I'll do here is I will measure two and a half inches in here um, and what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to put a guide there but you can see I want to make sure I add the same amount to the length of the shoulder. So in order to get this to line up, I'm actually gonna extend my shoulder like this. All right, so this was 3 eighths. So I'm gonna add 3 eighths over here. So really it works out to be right about there, okay? And then I'm gonna raise up my center back a half an inch just so it's a little bit closer, okay? And this looks really narrow, but we want it to be up at the base of the back neckline. Okay, so let's have that be the shape. What I'll do is I'm going to cut the shoulder off so we can t check the shape. All right, so what I'm going to do is let's put the back right next to the front now like this. And see how it looks. Okay, so you can see that that matches up pretty nicely. So I have a pretty smooth transition from front to back. And if I were to measure across my center front to my center back, it's about five, five inches. And remember, we're going to have a seam allowance there, so that's putting us really close to our six-inch 
um, neck measurement that I talked about a second ago. Remember, knits stretch, so if it's a, we want to be a little bit smaller than that six inch number. And if we use quarter inch seam allowances here to sew the neckband on, that's going to put us um, at maybe five and a half. I think I'm happy with that in terms of a neckline opening that's a good amount of shape you know, for a, um, a, a mock turtleneck. So let me just cut off this. Now here's the other thing that I didn't specifically say. When you draw your guideline at your center front, make sure the first half inch or so is perpendicular from you know the center front because you want this to be a right angle okay and it really you really want this to be very close to a right angle as well like I might have this come out just a little bit just a little bit like that maybe just cut that out. and that way when you sew it together you'll get nice straight lines okay so there's the shape of my my front neckline and here's my back neckline. Let me put it back together one more time so you can see. Okay, so this is going to be, if you left it like this, this would be a very close crew neck. Okay, so for those of you who voted for that, this is how you make that. So really, I think I'm just going to make everybody happy and show everybody how to get the neckline they wanted. If you wanted to convert this front into a V, you're just going to draw yourself a, um, a gentle, you know, more, you know, maybe drop it a little bit here, maybe an inch or a little bit less than an inch, and then sort of dash in a gentle V, you know, from the tip. So all you really have to do is cut that little bit off. I'll color it blue so you can see. If you cut this off, then you'll have a gentle high V. Okay, so you could do that. Okay, so that's how you would get those other more simple shapes without adding anything. All right, so now that we have the shape of our, um, our mock turtleneck neckline, what I'm going to do here is I am going to mark my seam allowances and I'm going to use a quarter inch here so let me just use my green marker and I'm just going to mark a quarter inch line like that okay and I'm going to measure that line and the way I like to measure is to use my my clear grid ruler bends so I'm just going to line it up like this and I'm going to measure from the center front to the shoulder seam allowance so we mark that as well let's see what we have here so this front neckline measures four and we're going to go with four and a half. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Four and a quarter. So from the center front to the seam allowance at the shoulder, it's four and a quarter. So I'll just make a note of that. Four and one quarter. And then our back neckline measures. Let's just see what the back neckline measures here. I'm going to dash in my Here's my shoulder seam. And then we'll measure our seam allowance. I'm just going to mark that in. Because remember, we're going to stitch the, the, tur the mock turtleneck onto the neckline along the seam allowance. And that seam allowance is a little bit longer than the cut edge. All right, so the next step is to measure the neckline. Get this a little bit closer. 
closer so you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm measuring from the shoulder seam to the center back, I'm getting three, we're gonna call it three inches. It might be like three and an eighth, but I'm gonna go with three inches there. Okay, so our back is three inches and our front is four and a quarter. So that's what we're working with in terms of a measurement of our neck. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna get myself a piece of um, pattern paper. Actually, it'll give me an opportunity to use, I'm saving up these scrap papers. Um, let me make it a little bigger here. Okay, so what I'm gonna start by doing is I'm gonna start by drawing a line. We're gonna draft the mock turtleneck now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line and I know I need it to be, remember the front neckline was four and a half inches, or I'm sorry, was it four and a quarter? I'm sorry, four and a quarter, four and a quarter plus three, that's seven and a quarter times two is 14 and a half inches. So my line needs to be at least 14 and a half inches. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw myself a line. And a mock turtleneck is usually three inches or shorter in terms of how high it stands up. If it starts to hand, if it starts to um, stand up higher than three inches, it gets confused with a turtleneck. Um, so I'm going to make my mock turtleneck. Um, I'm going to measure two inches. So I'm just going to draw myself a second line here. Okay, and then we need a third. We need the face, the self facing. Which so I'm just going to draw myself another line. Okay, so this is going to be the top folded edge of the mock turtleneck. Okay, and then these two edges are going to get folded together to sew it. Hi, Jerry. Welcome. Happy fun. Happy fun Friday. Whoop, whoop. All right. So now I've got that done. What I'm gonna do here is, I'm just gonna fold my paper in half to make a center line here. So basically I'm just lining up my lines and I'm just gonna fold it in half so I have a center. Now, here's the thing. If you follow along with me at all, you probably notice I never put my seams for my neckband finishes at the center back. I want to line up that seam with a shoulder seam. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define this edge right here as um, this is going to be, I'm just going to label it SS for shoulder seam. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to measure from the shoulder. Let's measure across the front. So if, if half of our front is four and a quarter, then our total front is eight and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure eight and a half inches like this. Okay, and I'm just gonna draw a second line. Okay, so this is gonna be my, my other shoulder seam. Okay, so if I were to use a different color so we have some different things going on here so I'm going to measure that four and a quarter as well because that's going to be the center front All right so this right here will be center front okay center front all right so that's the front of our mock turtleneck then I'm going to add up three and three because that's what we our back is that gives us six inches so I'm just gonna measure six inches from this other shoulder seam. And that puts us right here, just long enough. Okay, 
Okay, so you can see we're back at a shoulder seam. Okay, so this is our mock turtleneck. And if I were to measure three inches across here, that'll be my center back. We'll be right here. You know, and having all of these guidelines on your pattern piece um, will just help you pin it to your neckline. So this is how you draft a mock turtleneck and you can certainly make it as narrow or you know you can make it as high as you want just keep in mind if it starts to get higher than three inches it's going to start to want to fold or curl down so i would make it you know two inches or less and actually mine's going to be under two inches high because i'm not going to add a seam allowance here I do need to add my little quarter inch seam allowances to the end pieces, so I'll do those in pink. So this is my seam allowance there, and my seam allowance here. Okay, but I'm not going to add seam allowances to the top and bottom edge, so in reality my mock turtleneck will be under two inches high once it's sewn together. Okay, so that's, that's how you make a mock turtleneck pattern piece. Um, so if, and does anybody have any questions about adjusting their neckline um, to then create this? All right, let me know if you have questions, because I'll help you. Um, so that's what I want you to have prepped. I want you guys to have this prepped and ready to go for not next week but the week after we're going to sew so next week is going to be um, how to do the sleeve hack um, so you need to have this part done and then what I want to do is I'm going to just get one of my minis I printed out and I'm going to show you how to make a cowl neckline too okay if I printed out some little ones and the way you're going to do a cowl neck is let me just get one piece sorry ready like this I'll just clear all my mess out of the way here all right so what you're going to do first is you want to decide how much of a cowl you would like. So the cowl I'm going to show you to make, how to make here is, it's going to have sort of, sort of a soft draping up at the center front. So that's what we're making. I don't want to add any fullness to the rest of the body of the top because we're wearing this as a layering tee. So what we're going to do is, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to wrap a tape measure, you know, around my neck. All right, and you can use this as a guide to see how much you want to um, spread the pattern, you know, how big of a cowl you want. So I'm going to just make a circle here. And so, like, let's say this is the amount, you know, approximately when you pull it to the side. And the tape measure, of course, is sticking to my neck because it's so hot up here. But, you know, you want to be able to see where it's going to, pull out to, you know, where it'll pull out to. Okay, so I'm going to make mine a little bit smaller. So this right here is 30 inches. It looks short, but, you know, it's got to wrap around around the back of your neck and back. So um, I think, you know, this would be a good amount for me, but certainly wrap the tape measure around and see how far you can pull it away from you, like pull it to the side you know, so you can see sort of how far, you know, it's going to gap open, you know, if it were to pull. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that number and you're going to divide it in half. So if you've got a 30-inch ring here, it's going to be 15 inches that you're going to spread your um, pattern piece. Okay, so that's how you can tell how approximately big to make it. The next thing is um, I'm going to draw some guidelines here and... The whole idea about this is we're going to um, 
close the neckline first, just like we did before. So basically what I'm going to do here is um, I'm just going to square up my neckline because we want this to be sort of a high cowl, I think, especially if you're, you know, if you're making a, um, you know, if you're making a, a layering tee. So I'm going to just use this because this just makes it easy here. I'm just going to touch this L-shaped ruler to my um, tip of the shoulder and my center front. And then I'm just going to trace that. So this would be the same as drawing horizontal and vertical like I did before, but this is actually going to become part of our shirt now. So not only did we fill in the neckline, we basically just completely got rid of the shape of the neckline here. We're going to do that in the front and the back. Um, all right, so let's just deal with the front first. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw a guideline from the original shoulder down to about, I want to say maybe two inches from the base of the armhole. So at this level right here, I'm just going to draw across here. Hold on. Okay, and then also from the original base of the shoulder, a vertical line like that. Okay, so that's how the pattern looks now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a pivot point over here. That's going to be my pivot down here at the side seam. So I am going to oh, um, I'm going to cut from vertically down and then I'm going to cut along my horizontal and I'm going to make a hinge here. And what that's going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to spread it. So if this were a full size pattern, what you'd be looking for is a measurement half of the tape measure you wrapped around your neck. That's your guide. So obviously this is a teeny little sloper, so I'm going to just spread it, you know, let's just spread it. Um, that's five inches. We're just going to go with that, I think. And then let me get some paper. This tracing paper so you can see the difference. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just tape this I'm just going to tape it on here so I have something to work with here. Okay. And so again, the first thing is you're just going to measure from here. You know, you can always make your center front area, you can always nail that down because that's not moving. So this is stable here, right? So I'm just pivoting this out. So I'm measuring from here to here till I get it to be approximately half of whatever I, I looped around my neck. So let's pretend that's what we ended up with, like that. All right, and you can see what's happened now is the the shoulder area here is much higher than the um, than my center front is now. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to make that even. And if you had a full length or a full size pattern, you probably would have to add approximately two inches. I'm going to add a little bit less, less just to make it even. Okay, so you can see what I did here is I evened up my um, okay, so I evened up from the tip of the shoulder to the center front. Okay, so that's going to create the cowl because when you go to sew it back together when you go to sew the shoulder seam back to the back, it's going to push all this in like this, and that's how you're going to get your cowl. Okay? So now that we have the cowl shape all set, the next thing is we want to make a self-facing. 
So what I'm going to do here is I am going to, from my shoulder edge, I'm going to make a 90 degree angle. I'm actually going to just make it be um, 90 degrees from my shoulder edge here. Okay, so I'm just going to go up. You know, let's make it two inches. Okay, then what you're going to do is you're going to extend that center front up. Uh, let's, that could be a little bit more even. That could be a little bit deeper. So we'll do two and a half inches. Okay. Because this is the center front. This is going to be where the shoulder is over here. Okay. And then we're just going to create a smooth curved edge to this facing piece. I'm just going to use my curved ruler here. Okay, so you can see what we've created is the facing for the cowl, okay, because you're going to catch this edge into the shoulder edge when you sew it, okay, so that's how you create a cowl, all right, and if I were to cut this out, I'm just, I'm just going to tape it a little better and cut it out so you can see what's going to happen here. You know, and you can certainly play with this edge. This looks a little bit straight to me, actually. Like, I think really, maybe I would extend this a little bit more and make it a little bit more curved like this, now that I'm looking at it. Just so it's got a, a little bit of depth to it. Right, so let me cut this out so I can show you how this is going to work. So I'm just going to smooth out this side seam where the where the pivot is. All right, let's cut this out. And we've got our center front. Okay. All right. So what's going to happen here is when you sew, this is going to get folded down like this. And you can see from the back side, it's going to match up with the shoulder. So you're going to catch that into the shoulder when you sew it. And that's what's going to help create the nice finished edge to the, to the, the cowl. Okay? Because when you bring this back in and you, um, when you go to sew it to the back, it's actually going to bunch up like this. And it's going to give you that nice cowly thing. I can't do it with the paper. Basically, it's going to come back up like this, and all of this fabric is going to fall nicely from your neck. So that's how you create a cowl. Does anybody have any questions? You guys have been really, really quiet. Um, let's do a time of the... Yeah, what's quarter of? Um, okay, so we have cowl, and we have mock turtleneck. Those are our two necklines. You know, plus I also think I showed you how to make the um, Alright. I'm just cutting this out so I can show you. There's my, my mock turtleneck that will get folded in half like this. There's the top edge, and when we sew it, we're going to actually sew it together and position that seam with the shoulder seam. All right, so that's our mock turtleneck. Here are our pieces. Okay, so we've got our two necklines. The last thing I want to talk about is how to make a cropped version of the tee. Now, like I said at the beginning, oh, Mary says that is the least complicated instructions for column neck I have seen. Oh, well, thank you, Mary. I will tell you that I, um, I did this, I did a cowl like either last summer or the summer before when I was showing how to make different, um, 
necklines for I think it was the Abbey dress and um, you know I just I'm using let me show you the book I use if anybody's interested in designing knit things this is one of my go-to books designing and pattern making for stretch fabrics it has a lot of really good information in there Oh, Mary says that she would measure her neck to determine um, if it was going to be too tight. Um, that is a good idea. And while we're thinking about it, why don't I measure my neck? Of course, this is not going to be for me. This is going to be this one I'm making for Brittany. So, but I'm just going to measure my neck. I'm willing to bet everybody's neck is within an inch or so of each other. I would say. It, not more than two inch difference. All right, so my neck measures 15 inches. So if I were to measure my, what did I say this was? Oh, look, 14 and 5 eighths. So I think that's going to be a very nicely fitting um, mock turtleneck on me. It's a skosh skinnier than I am. I mean, it's a, it's, it's about three eighths of an inch smaller than my neck, so I think, I think that's going to be pretty good. Oh, <laughs> Netwear says, "Wow, Jen, it's like being in class with you again." Oh well, yay! Glad you're enjoying. Um, all right, so definitely check your neck to your finished, you know, your finished piece to make sure it's not significantly smaller than you. Now here's the other factor. You, the stretchiness of your fabric is going to come into play here because let's say we, we were using 20% stretch fabric on a neck band that's fit 15 inches approximately. That means for every 15 inches it's going to stretch 3 inches. So that's a lot of give. So you definitely want your mock turtleneck piece to be a little bit smaller than you or it'll really stand away from your neck um, but definitely measure your neck and and check on that and also check your fabric and I'll be helping you check your fabric later um, all right so what I did here for the body of our um, T is I marked I measured from the shoulder down about 14 inches. Okay, 14 and a quarter. Yeah, but 14 inches if I got rid of the seam allowance. Um, and because I think that's a good amount of measurement. So I found out where that was on my side seam in the front and that will on the back. Okay, so that's the first thing. Um, that's the first thing that you need to do to, to make your cropped T is decide where you're actually going to crop it. Um, well Mary says the mock piece still has to fit over your head. It does. It absolutely does. But I will tell you that if you're working with a stretch fabric, um, so in my, in my example, oh, let's measure my head. <laughs> I just want to entertain all of this. Hold on. I'm going to measure the widest part of my head probably is across my forehead. Hold on. Alright, so my head is approximately 20, 22 and a half. So if I have a 15 inch piece and I'm working with 20, 25, 20 to 25 percent, that's going to be 2, 4, 20. Alright, that is going to be a little bit snug going over my head. But um, I think my turtleneck pattern was around 15 or 16 inches. Um, but again, this is the smallest size in my pattern that I'm working with. This is the, the smallest size. So if you're working with your size, um, you'll be able to, you know, you can make the neck a little bit bigger if you need to. Um, just trying to think here. All 
Um, well, we will revisit that when we're checking our fabric before we cut out because if our fabric isn't going to stretch, we can also make a test mock turtleneck and we can we can sew the mock turtleneck up and try it on before we actually sew it to our neckline and if it's a little bit too small maybe we can do is add safety seam allowances so why don't we say that that's a good idea I'm gonna go with safety girl on your pattern for your mock turtleneck add an inch to each um, edge instead of a quarter inch and sew your seam at an inch because that'll give you two inches to play with almost if it's too small. So we'll try our mock turtlenecks on before we sew them to our tops. And then if we need to let out this seam, we'll then modify the neckline if we need to to get it to fit the neckline. So that's what we're going to do um, because Mary brings up a very good point that this has to fit over our head. Um, so add safety seam allowances on your mock turtleneck but sew at the original answer. So whatever you came up with, we'll sew at that first. We'll see if we can pull it over our heads. And if we can, we'll leave it. And if not, we'll let it out a little and we'll adjust our neckline. So that's how we'll fit that. Um, but again, you're gonna wanna work with fabric that's 20, 25, 30% stretch. Um, you know, and really most, most mock turtlenecks are rib knit. So you might want to get a coordinating rib knit with your fabric and then it will definitely fit because rib knit stretches a ridiculous amount. Okay, so that's the other thing to consider. Um, if you want to use the same fabric as your top for your neckline, then we will check it before we finish. So add safety seam allowances, maybe add an inch to each end, but sew at an inch and test it. And then we will fix it if it's too tight, I'll show you how to fix it when we after we cut out and start sewing. All right, and then it won't require us to need any new ones either because we'll have one that's too big that we can trim and we can scoop out the shape of this to make it a little bit bigger if it's not going to fit over our heads. But try to pick something really stretchy to work with so you don't have the problem of um, having your fabric not be stretchy enough. Okay, so what I want to do now is I wanted you want to measure right below your armhole okay so maybe an inch or two below your armhole measure your pattern so you know what that is I measured mine already it's 34 and a half across and then down where I'm gonna hem it or where it's gonna be cropped it's 32 so what you want to do is you want to compare those measurements to your measurements so you know, measure yourself approximately 14 inches down or however far you want to make, you know, the length of your crop. Measure that, then measure your body where that hem is going to hit you. Um, so I have Brittany's measurement. I'm not going to use my measurement for this. Um, let's see here. Her measurement is... Okay, at her midriff, she's 35 inches. So you can see if this T is 32 inches, I think that that's going to work out because it's three inches smaller than her, and I think that'll make that fit. Um, so you want to make sure that your bottom edge is going to be, you know, probably between three and four inches smaller than you are so it fits where it's going to be cropped. Okay, so at 32 inches, I'm happy with that. If you need to take it in a little bit, you know, it may work, work out that you need to take it in a little bit. I think for this application, we can just take it in on the sides. Um, but I'm just going to cut this. I'm going to add a hem allowance, three-quarter inch hem allowance here. And then I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to show you how I'm going to cut it. So there's my hem allowance mark there and my hem allowance mark here. Okay, now to get that hem to sit on to be nice when we go to fold it up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my 
crop, I'm going to fold along my cropped line here, my finished length, like this. Then when I cut it out, I'm going to just cut through all the layers. Okay. And then when I open it back up, you can see it created the shape I need. All right, so it's slightly flared out a little bit. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing in the front. I'm going to fold on this line, my crop line. at my hem here. All right, so now I've got my cropped front and back pieces with a hem allowance. I've got my I've got my my mock turtleneck here. And then if you're going to be making the the cowl, let's just look at that again, okay? So there's the cowl neck. If you're going to do that, this is what it's going to look like. All right, so have all this stuff ready to go. Next Friday, I'm going to show you how to make a, a statement sleeve. And all I'm going to say at this point is have two copies of your sleeve ready to go because um, we're going to need two copies to make the sleeve. I'm kind of excited. Um, so that's what we're going to do next Friday. Um, I'm really excited because I thought I was in my rush of looking at my calendar, I thought I was going to have to cancel Fab Fit Friday again because I'm teaching my squirt class for the Walnut Creek, they changed their name to something Contra chapter of the ASG, um, but it's tomorrow, and I initially I thought, oh god, I hope it's not on Friday because I remember scheduling it, but happily that's tomorrow, so if any of you are joining me for the squirt and simple class with the Walnut Creek chapter. We're going to have all sorts of fun tomorrow um, making a squirt. Oh, Diane is saying, silly question, will this cropped top be worn under or over another garment? All right, so here's the cool thing, ladies. If you want to make this crop top to wear under something, make it snug. Okay, that's what I'm going to be making mine for. But if you wanted to make a cropped top, let's say you wanted you had a sweater knit, for example, and you wanted to make a cropped top to wear over a button-down shirt so the hem stuck out, you could do that as well. So you really could make it in either direction. The one way I will never wear it as, is as a crop top all by itself, because that is not I'm not in that age group anymore, so I will not be bearing my midriff. <laughs> but I will be putting mine underneath something. And like I said at the beginning, I'm kind of excited because there are a lot of really strappy designs that I like, but I can never wear them because my straps of my bra are too wide um, to hide underneath something that's more strappy. So I'm kind of looking forward to think what I could make or design to wear over it that's got a strappy look to it. It's almost like, have you seen like people wear strapless or, or bustiers with um, a shirt over underneath it, like something like that. I don't know if I love that look in particular, but I think there must be a way for me to get something strappy that I could wear over a cropped layering tee. So that's, that's where my head is going. But I love it that you're questioning that because you totally could make it as a crop top that you wear over like a button down shirt, for example. Um, you know, so you can, and you can adjust where that crop is. It doesn't have to be super short. Um, oh, Andrea says that she has to miss tomorrow with the ASG, but you'll love the group. Again, lots of friendly faces. Well, I, you know, I've 
I've gone to a lot of neighborhood ASG groups, and I always have a good time. I've never had a bad time at an ASG event, but I will tell you that Walnut Creek has a special place in my heart because I had an amazing time with them. The ladies are so sweet and so nice. We just had such an amazing time, so I am looking forward to it. Um, so I'm sorry you won't be there, Andrea, um, but I know... I know there's lovely ladies because I've met them in person, some of them. So I am looking forward to getting together with them via Zoom. So that's what I'll be doing tomorrow. Um, on Sunday, there will be a new episode of Embroidery Sundays, and I'm going to be diving in deep to underlay and what that does for your design. So I stitched out some samples of underlay, plus I have the underlay under my poppy stitching out so I can show you how it is in action. So. If you're interested in machine embroidery, check out Embroidery Sundays this weekend for a close look at underlay. Um, so that's what the topic is for that this week. Um, Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you're enjoying the last bits of summer. Um, it's very warm here, and I was talking to my dad yesterday, and we joked that I could have another six weeks of summer. Um, you know, so kind of trying to suck them in because you know I got my new liner in my pool but it wasn't ready till July so I feel like it's been a very short floating season for me so I will be running down there later and floating but you know either before or after dinner um, but I hope you guys are enjoying summer and you know we're getting ready for fall super exciting um, yeah so that's what I wanted to share with you today please keep me posted if you have questions or comments if you're in our group, Jay's Turn Designs Fit Sew Embroider on Facebook, feel free to post your pictures of what's going on, or if you have questions about drafting these necklines, I'll help you, and you can show me what you're doing in the group. Um, all right. Oh, Netwear says we'll have to get you to come to the Buck County, Buck, Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Pamela will tell you what a friendly group we are. Oh, I would love to come to Bucks County. I could practically, I could probably drive to that one, maybe. I used to drive to Michigan, and I used to drive down 80 through Pennsylvania when I used to go to the, um, the Sew Expo in Michigan um, when they used to have that. So I would definitely come. I love it. And, and actually, I do have one live event on my calendar. I'm just going to have to be super careful in the airport, but all the ladies in the um, South Carolina chapter that I'm going to teach stretch jeans for at the end of September, um, I do have one live event on my calendar for this year. So I'm a little nervous about going, but on the other hand, I really miss live events. So because it's a small group, I'm going to go. Yep, Novi, Michigan. Yep, the no, that Novi Michigan show was my favorite show to go to. Um, me and my friend Gail would drive together, but then I would stay at a separate hotel from her and from everybody I knew because I would work and teach during the day, and I would just sort of decompress and give myself a break. Um, I love that show. It was so sad to me when they ended it. Um, oh, Diane. Oh, that's where Diane and I met. I remember that, Diane. Oh. So, so sad that there's no no by Michigan show. Um, but in any case, that's um, that's that's my report for now. Um, again, if you're working on this project and you have questions, please either email me or um, you know post your questions in our Facebook group. I will help you. Um, if you're working on something and you want to share it, I know Mary shared some very cool denim shorts. Um, in the Facebook group. They're very cool. So if you haven't checked those out yet, go check those out. Um, and then several other ladies have posted pictures of things they've made. I know Diane put her tank top and um, something else. And um, Denise has put some squirts in there. So definitely share. Netwear and I met in Atlanta the first time in 2010. Wow, that's going back. <laughs> that's definitely going. I can't believe that was 11 years ago. Oh my goodness. 
All right, well, I hope everybody enjoyed this. I'm going to sign off because I have to finish doing a few more things before it gets I get tired of the heat in my studio. But thank you so much. Thank you so much for following along with me. Um, I will put a link to the tea twin set underneath this live stream if anybody wants to use that pattern to make this top. Um, and please keep me posted if you have any questions. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I'm going to sign off now because I can already tell I'm getting to the point during these fun live streams where I start rambling on. So I'm just going to cut myself off and say goodbye, happy weekend, and I will see you next week for more fun. And you can check out Sunday's um, embroidery video on Underlay. All right? All right. Have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you for joining me.